Well, welcome everybody to this session of uh, the Pedigree Matching Zoom Room. Today's uh, topic is broodmares. Um, perhaps the most important topic for any breeder to discuss because it really is your primary asset as a breeder. And if you don't have the right mares, uh, you're just not going to get the right results. So how do you determine what the right mares are? Well, the first thing you have to consider is, uh, well, what is, uh, what am I trying to do here? What's my hope for the future? Am I planning to compete at the grand circuit level? Or I just want to raise something that will be competitive in my own area, my own state, uh, province. Uh, you have to set a goal for yourself. And then you can work accordingly to, to, to achieve that goal, uh, given your own particular circumstances. We can't all afford to go out and spend fifty, dollars $100,000 for a broodmare, obviously. Not that you have to do that in order to get a good one, but that, that, that can achieve greatness. But uh, chances are the percentages certainly lie in that way that, that uh, the kind of mares that produce individuals like blue diamond eyes, you can see it on the screen here. Um, I probably have a mares that uh, uh, sold for pretty good money. So bear that in mind when you're making your decisions, but regardless of how much you spend for the mayor or how much you plan to spend for the stallion or where you're going to breed, you still have to get, you still have to do it correctly. And there is a process, you should establish a process. I have my own process for how I evaluate mares. And the reason I use a process is because I guess because I'm, my experience as an engineer dictates that when you make decisions and you make the same kind of decisions over a period of time, then it's important that you be consistent in the way you approach these decisions. You don't just guess at it one time and take a chance on it another time and then actually look at the facts another time. You create a process that's based on fact, not on fiction, not on feelings, not on what somebody else told you might be okay. You build your process based on facts. And you do it step by step. That's what a process is. We call it an algorithm in engineering. An algorithm is just a, a series of steps that you take to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Bearing in mind all of the things that can impact the decision. Your ultimate decision of either choosing a mare or choosing a stallion. I, before I get into the actual process that I use, I just wanted to give you a couple of il illustrations of uh, mares that raced last night. They're really quite remarkable to see them so consistently well-bred with respect to the sorts of things that I, I particularly look for. Here's one called Blue Diamond Eyes. See one uh, the two-year-old um, trilly race, the three diamonds. As you can see, she's by Captain Treacherous. Uh, another one by well said. If you look at Captain Treacherous's uh, profiles to date, you'll see that the majority of them are out of Nornooks, the majority of good ones are out of Nornooks line mares. They also 
the majority of them have this Abercrombie cross in the pedigree. And this particular filly, if you look at her in more depth, you'll see here the, the dam is a combination of three Metaskipper lines, or two Metaskipper lines and two Abercrombie lines. And up here you have Abercrombie and Metaskipper lines, the maternal ones that you're working with here. So this is technically a double-double pedigree. But what, and it's also outcrossed on sire line. Here's the sire line, it's the Matt Scooter line, outcrossed onto a at a skipper line. And there's a good, uh, there's, there's arch place across the pedigree and that's actually in X factor position because it's, it's got a red highlight on it. Do you see other individuals that are in X factor position? Nihilator, for instance, here and here. And when you see those th sorts of things, you have to determine whether or not they're significant. Most of the time they are. It is possible that you would get an individual showing up in red across the pedigree that has no particular trace maternally. But what I've found in looking at top pedigrees is that the ones that do show up are the ones that have significance. For instance, Nihilator goes back to uh, Margaret Paris, his Margie's Melody, gives you a clue because if you look at her pedigree, you'll see that it's a direct and direct maternal line of Margaret Parrish right down here. So that's Nihilator. Big Tanner here in Captain Treacherous pedigree is also a Margaret Parrish. And Matt Scooter here, well said, is a sire of a, a second dam. And goes back down here to Eileen Arian, maternal line again. Margaret Parish here, other than Arians by Arian Guy, but Margaret Parish. Now, this is a long way ago. This is 100 years ago. So, how does something that goes back, a trace that goes back 100 years or more, have any effect at all on modern day pedigrees? Um, people say that. You can't go back any more than two or three generations for have any to have any effect by a particular gene or whatever it is on uh, as an influence on a current day pedigree. But it certainly does seem that there's something that's being carried continuously through the generations. And and when it gets built up in a pedigree such as this, especially in a filly, you get a special individual, just like blue dyed and eyes. And in fact, the one that finished second in this race, Notorious Pink, has an almost identical pedigree. She too is by Captain Treacherous, a Romare by American Ideal. American Ideal is Western Ideal with Matt Scooter, maternally. But the same kind of a, a, a dam that's inbred to Martin Parish, bred to a sire whose dam as Martin Parish in it. So it's not a fluke situation. It is very much a, a fact. And whether you can explain it or not, or it doesn't make sense to you, if you're trying to make go back and say, well, it doesn't make any sense to have this thing going for eight or ten generations, and still have it having an effect. There's something happening here in top pedigrees that relates to that trace back to Margaret Parish or Helen Hanover or 
Miss Russell or even all the way back to Diamond, the great thoroughbred. And so you have to, I do at least accept it for what it is. It's an important thing to see in pedigrees. Now, there were a number of these uh, last night. Um, Sam between, between my toes or sand in my toe, kissing in the wind, kissing in the sand was another case. She's not only in a filly with a double to Mary Parish across her pedigree, she also has a double to Helen Hanover across her pedigree. She's got both major influences doubled across her pedigree, which is why you go in 148 at this time of year and set stake records. So she's a great mare and she will be a great brood mare accordingly. And she was by some beast somewhere. Some beast somewhere is a rare individual. Well, he was rare in terms of the way he performed, obviously, as a racehorse. And he's been exceptional as a, as a sire of uh, top individuals. I think currently his success rate is somewhere hovering close to 40% in getting $100,000 winners. It's unheard of. And that's his average. And in some cases, there's, there are crosses that are even better than 40%. So it's a tremendous legacy that he's going to throw. And Captain Treacherous is obviously picking up on it. So let's, um, let's get back to the process and see where do we start. Well, I'm going to go down here. Bring up a couple of screens. This is a book that's available for download uh, uh, on the website. I think it's free at the moment. I, or yeah, I think you have to put in one cent into the one cent into the payment process to get it. But this is the book that I use in my pedigree camps, and it's called Practical Pedigrees. And it's just what it is, a guide to better pedigree decisions. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here that some of it is already in my uh, previous book uh, called uh, Queen Among Queens, which is the, really the history of maternal lines, the standard breads, and of course, featuring the Queen of Queens herself, which is uh, Miss Russell. So, some of this book summarizes some of the information that I've just been talking about. Sire lines, maternal lines, X factors, superior females. Also gives you some definitions of terminology and so forth. Just some general comments on breeding. <clears throat> then we look at what constitutes the, the, the correct pedigree. And then there's a section on doing your homework. And this is what we're gonna concentrate on here today. Because these are the four things that you basically have to look at when you're looking to buy a mare or to breed a mare to a particular stallion. Pedigree, sixth generation chart pedigree is important. You gotta print that off very first thing. And print it off and keep it in your file. And you can mark it on it and, and, and mark the important stuff as you research it. Uh, and then performance is something that is a point of time thing. Pedigrees don't change. Once they're, once they're created, they're the same, same individuals. But performance changes from time to time. Obviously, if there are young horses in the pedigree, you're looking at uh, printing off a, a sales page, three generation sales page, which you can do using the program. And I print off the option for, uh, if you go up here, 
what you're looking for here is a buyer's sale page. Basically the page that shows you everything in the three generations in the pedigree. And that way you can have a look and see just what kind of qualities there are in this pedigree in terms of performance. Now performance in standard breads is determined two ways. One of them is the speed at which it can achieve, the speed, the speed it can achieve in a race. And the other is the amount of money that it earns in its lifetime. Now, obviously this is young Philly now, she's just two. She had a full brother last year or this year that's a three-year-old that's done reasonably well, gone in 48 and through three. And there was a yearling sold this year. I'm not sure what it sold for, but probably sold pretty good. And if you go down into the pedigree, you'll see other stuff like here's Air Force Hanover. He was in the uh, raced in the Metro, uh, the North American Cup, uh, as I recall. And when you get down here, of course, you've got Caviar Alley, who is racing in the top mare. She's got over two million made. And his foreign officer down here, 900,000. This is kind of stuff of, of which champions are made. Basically, if you want to uh, breed a champion, there should be some evidence in the history of the, the, the individual to show that the pedigree is cre uh, capable of producing champions. Now back here, obviously a $2 million horse is, a, is an incredible horse. Uh, this dam did okay. She had a half a million dollar one and this one was okay, but no million dollar winners. So it skips a generation. And here we have a situation here where this one could well be one of the very best of our generation. Maybe the best, one of the best three-year-olds next year. She could be the next million dollar winner in the family. And you can expect that sort of thing to happen because the family has proven that it does happen, that there are, there are big hitters in this family to be had if you read them right. So that's uh, the second element. The third element is profiles. Um, we've looked at profiles quite often in the last a few sessions. And profiles are very important. In order to get a profile, say for instance, here's well said. Or Captain, let's say Captain Treacherous, okay. I'll give you a, a current one. You go to the stallion tab, type in the name, and select Sire Profile. And up will come the top 20 individuals by Captain Treasures. Now, if you were going to buy a Captain Treacherous, or if you thought you should, you got a chance to buy a Philly by Captain Treacherous. Maybe it didn't race. Maybe it was just a modest racehorse. Um, excuse me, somebody's got their uh, mic on. Could they shut it down, please? Um, so here we have a situation here. You look at the best by Captain Treacherous. And if the filly that you're looking at to buy as a broodmare doesn't look like anything in his best ones, you might want to give us uh, dig a little deeper to see if there's Maybe there's something just off the page, but by and large, what happens in these situations is that there are uh, the, the, the profile that a, a sire established. Now, this is only his third crop, 
but this profile will not change significantly for the rest of his career. It's well established now after three crops. You could say the same and it's almost as well established after the first crop. But there's always something that pops up that you weren't expecting. But so far, so uh, in, in, in terms of Captain Treacherous, for the most part, they're very consistent. You can see the prevalence of metascopal lines. These are the red lines. Now he, Captain Treacherous, had three. Uh, his dam is Arts Place Nihilator. And some be somewhere's dam was Beach Towel Camp Fellow. Those, are, those three are all different Metascopal lines. Go back to Del Frost. They all go back to Del Frost. But they take different routes to get there. But if you look at the, his best ones, you will see that they are either inbred to the Metascopal line, such as this one is, or line bred to the Metascopal line, such as this one is. This one is also inbred to the Metascopal line. This one is line bred to the Metascopal line and inbred to the Metascopal line. This one's line bred. This one's line bred. This one's inbred. This one's line bred, line bred, line bred, line bred, line bred, line bred, inbred, 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 line bred, line bred, line bred, line bred, line bred, and inbred. So, number one factor, if you're going to look at a Captain Treacherous filly, either to buy as a yearling or maybe potentially as a broodmare, it better be showing that single biggest component of the profile of cat and treacherous at this point, being either line bred or inbred to the Metascopal line. And I'm not saying specific individuals, but if you, in, in, the, in those Metascopal sire lines, but if you look a little closer at that, what do you see? Nero, son of Metascopal, Tijuana Taxi, Albatross Line, Cold Harbor, Albatross Line. Here's one a little different, a little different, Nihilator Albatross Line. Her on the table, Grand Son of Meta Skipper, Albatross Line, Son of Meta Skipper, Albatross Line, Albatross, 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 Albatross again. So Albatross or Sons of Meta Skipper in the pedigree are obviously quite important too. Not to the same extent, but it's also a consideration. But a more of a consideration is this. These are the Abercrombie lines. You see up here, you get, we get Art's place here, son of Abercrombie. Now Captain Crunch happens to have, happens to be line bred to the Adios line. This is Falcon's future actually goes back through Brett Hanover to Adios. Art's place goes back through Henry T. Adios to Adios. But they're both the same star line, the Adigo star line, this one here. The second best one has Abercrombie. The third best one has Arts Place. This is an exception. It's Towner's big guy. We'll come back to that. Here's another one that has Abercrombie and a Brett Hanover line. Abercrombie, Abercrombie, and here's the big Towner again. Abercrombie, 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 and Big Towner, Abercrombie, or Abercrombie here, here, uh, Adios line here, here. Of the top 20, there's only one here that has, that doesn't have either an Abercrombie line or a Big Towner line. So what is, what made her different? Well, maybe it's something to do with her, the mare. Uh, right off the top, I could see that um, there's no nukes in there, which is Helen Hanover. And, uh, but that's one out of 20. That's a, not the rule of uh, the general rule. I like to look at general rules. If you happen to come across a filly that was lined up pretty much the same as this one. And there probably are some out there. 
then maybe you could take a chance. But I wouldn't look at a, a mayor, a captain treacherous mayor, that didn't fit the general profile, unless it did, was almost identical to the one or two exceptions that are in the profile. You can see here, there's uh, Actually, there's not a whole lot across this pedigree that, you know, there's Abercrombie, there's no Abercrombie. You got Nihilator, you got an Albatross there. It's just uh, kind of came out of nowhere. These things happen. And so when you get a freak situation like that, don't try to copy it unless you have an exact copy. It doesn't work. So that's the SAR profiles. Very important to look at our profiles. Now we'll go back here and look at the patterns. Now by patterns, there are several types of patterns that exist when you're trying to match up uh, stallion with the mare. And it's also important that those same patterns occur in the mare herself or similar patterns. And what are those patterns? Well, let's start off with this guy here. It's not, well, that's line central. Look at what, look at this filly here. Now, in the early days of pedigree matching, I was interested in situations where uh, that fitted uh, what was called uh, the old mantra that was it goes back a long ways of return to the sire the best part of his dam. So, what does that mean, Captain Treacherous's dam? is Abercrombie uh, Nihilator, which is Abercrombie Metaskipper, really. Albatross is the son of Metaskipper. And if you look down here, you'll see Abercrombie. And there's a Metaskipper line, Metaskipper line, and a Dale Frost line, which is the Metaskipper line. So just simply from, uh, in terms of following that, that old premise, this matches up pretty good. As my understanding of looking at that particular premise uh, developed, I started to see individuals where there was no particular com uh, connection between the dam of the sire and the mayor here. Uh, in other words, there was no Abercrombie down here, perhaps, or no Albatross. I'd like to see both of them down here, if I'm doing or, 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 or similar, uh, as a basic uh, pattern. But what I did see was that what was happening up here in the dam of somebody somewhere, somehow or other, for instance, occurred down here. For instance, there's Meta skipper, meta skipper. And this is line bred to meta skipper and inbred to meta skipper. Now, does that mean anything? And this, and, and I found that it, in fact, the rationale for something like that is this. If this particular maternal line fitted this mare, then in turn, this particular maternal line, uh, then uh, I'm sorry, this particular maternal line should fit this one. It can, it can jump the generation. And we've, I'll show you some examples of that as we get further into it. But that's ultimately evolved into what I call the double-double pattern. Because really, it's not a, it, it's, 
that in itself is no guarantee uh, that if you if you breed, for instance, a mare that has beach towel and camphella to a sire that whose that uh, sire has the, those same individuals doesn't necessarily guarantee it. It's not a complete pattern. It would be complete if you ha also had one or other of these down here. And that's what a double-double is. And that's, and I started seeing this back about 10 years ago. When I started doing work for Ed James and we were buying two-year-olds in Harrisburg. And his idea was that he, he, he was a like father, like son kind of guy in terms of looking at pedigrees. He believed that, that uh, if the sire, if, if, if the grandsire worked for this kind of mare, then the, the son would do the same thing. And to a certain extent, that is true. There are sires that do follow that principle. Muscle Hill we've shown in, in, the, in the last couple of sessions, very much so, that he, uh, he is a TB or top and bottom pattern guy, and his sons are exactly the same. They are, he and his sons are, are, are speedy crown light sires that do best with mares that are inbred to speedy crown. So that's a pattern, like the double double pattern that's, that's kind of evolved over the last 10 years that I've seen. And I've seen it replicate. And um, the very first one uh, we bought was a son of Camlock um, the, uh, it's 10 or 12 years ago that Ed paid 40000 for as a two-year-old out of uh, the, the sale. And he ended up making $1.4 million. I liked the pedigree because it crossed well in, in a traditional sense. But after that one worked in three or four other ones that he bought, that we bought together, or, well, at least he bought on my recommendation or after I'd looked at them, uh, they turned out to be pretty good horses too. And then I went back and I said, okay, here we've had, we've had four horses that we bought for less than $40,000. And every single one of them has made over 800,000. What are we doing right here? What's, what's, what's in these pedigrees? And then I found it. They were all double, double pattern pedigrees. So then all of a sudden the light goes on. And I say, well, this is something I should be looking for. The TB pattern came along a little later. I got doing a lot of work with, with some people with thoroughbreds. And I was looking at them from a standard red pedigree perspective. And I did spot a certain number of them, successful ones that had standard bred type pedigrees. But it wasn't by any means common because thoroughbreds like they do in uh, Europe with standard breds, they try to stay away from close uh, double ups of um, individuals such as we see in, uh, in pedigrees like this. I mean, Hearts Place Castle pedigree like this, the Camphella here, Albatross here. Thoroughbred people wouldn't look at that. They don't like to see anything in common in here. They, they don't mind it back here somewhere. But what you do, what you did see was a very consistent pattern of 
the star line here being inbred in the mare. I'm, I not, don't know how much familiarity you have with thoroughbred pedigrees, but there are two principal star lines in uh, thoroughbreds. One goes through an individual called Northern Dancer. It's called the Niarco line. And the other one goes through an individual called Mr. Prospector. Um, and goes back to a horse um, um, called the Native Dancer. Uh, so there's the Native Dancer line, the Northern Dancer line. Ultimately, they both go back to a horse called Polymelian, but, but they are separate branches. And what you see in many cases uh, in the top individuals, and I've gone through, went through last year's um, entrance or, or the, this past uh, entrance to uh, the major race of the Kentucky Derby. And of the 18 or so entrants in there, I believe there were three double doubles and 14 TV patterns. Almost all of them showed that, those, that pattern. So I initially called it TB pattern as a consequence because it shows up so often in, in the thoroughbred pedigrees. But then I tried to apply it to, uh, to standard breads. And the first thing I did, I went back and I looked at all the top, the pedigrees of top standard breads. And this is back maybe four, four years ago. And of course, at that time, one of the biggest ones, biggest moneymaker, was moneymaker herself. So what did money, I, I looked at moneymaker many times and I never could really figure out what it was in her pedigree that was so important. But now I could see with the perspective of having seen this sort of thing in other great horses. Here's a speedster line, sire and speedy crown. And here's a dam that's inbred to speedster. This is the classic TV pattern. Now there also is a victory song across here. There's another Scotland line here, which is the uh, speedster Spencer Scott line and another Scotland line here. So there's a, there, there are other elements that are common across the pedigree, but nothing really strong in the middle of three, in, the, in this, in this three, four, third, fourth generation. So all of a sudden I realized that yes, there is another way to look at pedigrees in terms of pattern. It's not just all about what you double up across from here into here or, or vice versa. There are other possibilities. So from there, I went to looking at more modern pedigrees and in search of that kind of pattern. And of course, I ran into Muscle Hill. And what happened, what happened with Muscle Hill was when he went to Sire, when they went to Stan Sire, he had a most unusual maternal line. So here he is, Muscle Hill. His maternal line is line bred to Star Sprite. So it's, it's kind of a little strange in that respect. But if you look up here, because there are very, very few 
stallions out there that are line bred to start fried maternally. But it's Star Spride, Noble Victory, Speedy Crown, Noble Victory, and it's a double double. There's the there's the Volamite line, Speedster line, Star Spride line. So it's a double double pedigree, Muscle Hill is. It's not a TB pattern. It's there's the Speedster line, and there's the Speedster line here. And there's no other Speedster line in play. So it's not a TB pattern. Yet, if you looked at what I did, I went and there were a number of, a couple of sires that were already out there that had holes. Yankee Blondie actually has Diesel Don who raced and then was sent uh, to Finland and bred in Finland and in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, let's have a look at Diesel Don. And I went there looking to see what were the patterns in the best ones by Diesel Don. Now, mind you, the, he's, he's, he's working with different mares than he is in North America. A lot of them are French bred, or old Swedish or Finland lines and so forth. And so it it was a little, uh, here he is here, as you can see, this is the, out of the same mare. And I'm going to have a look at his, it might have changed somewhat from when, when I last looked at it, but this is what you do if you come up with a new SAR. You go and see if you can find something find something that uh, is out there that has already worked. And this is back in 2011, so Muscle Hill is a fall of 2005, as I recall. So this one was probably already, uh, may have been in, in the mix. But what I saw right off the bat in these top ones was what I see now in the best ones by Muscle Hill. Inbred to speedster line, inbred to speedster line, inbred to speedster line. This one's a little different, but it has the double star sprite. Again, this one's a little different, but it's got the double star sprite. Um, this is uh, a little different again. Now, these are not particularly strong individuals, but there is an element of uh, uh, a, uh, uh, there is a, a somewhat discernible pattern to these. And when I wrote up my prognostication for what, for what uh, would work with, uh, with Muscle Hill, my prediction was that it would be Star Sprite line that are inbred to Speedy Crown or Speedy Crown line that are inbred to Speedy Crown or Star Sprite. So that basically was my forecast for, for um, space. And there were other SARS as well. I believe uh, Amigo Hall is another one. I think that's the one. Let's have a look. See, Amigo Hall, his maternal line is Meadow Road in Texas. So at the time I looked at him, there was there were some patterns there that were showing up. Uh, as it turns out, the top two aren't aren't uh, typical, or the top three aren't typical. Although they are, that's a double star sprite, and here's a double star sprite, and here's an inbred speedster, an inbred speedster, inbred speedster. Double star sprite, inbred speedster, double star sprite, inbred speedster. So a large number of them, other than these very two, top two, which are both out of the same mare, looks like, no, not quite, almost the same, um, were of a certain pattern. So that kind of helped me uh, kind of 
reassure me that maybe I was on the, the right line. And as it turns out, for the most part, that's the way it's worked out. So those are the patterns that I look for now. I still look for individuals crossed across the pedigree Um, I don't know if there's anything in diesel done, but well, he was a full brother to, yeah. Uh, you're still looking for individuals across the pedigree, such as the volumite, and the volumite, um, the speedy crown and the speedy crown. They're both in this pedigree. Uh, of course, this is a double double. So, the, but it, in Earlier times, I would look at that and say, oh, good, that's, that looks good. Speedy crown, volumite, speedy crown, volumite. That's a, that's a match. Uh, then it evolved, of course, to the, the double doubles. And now the TB patterns, which is not existent here, but is in, certainly in, existent, in existence in both Muscle Hill and Diesel Dawn to a certain extent. So. Your understanding of what works evolves as you work more with it. Um, there's no silver bullet, as they say. There's no one single answer to, to your problem of finding great horses. It's a combination of things. And it's a, com and it's a combination of alternative things. For instance, a pattern may not exist, but a very strong uh, profile with respect to uh, paternal influence may exist. There are all kinds of top individuals that have um, doubles to Margaret Parrish and Helen Hanover and so forth that don't necessarily have either a TB or a DD pattern. There's some connection across the pedigree. <clears throat> But the significant part of them is the maternal strength that they bring. That, and, and they're usually mares that, that, that are like that, both in terms of uh, their own um, maternal strength and what they pick up from the side that they're bred to. Now, as part of the, uh, part of the booklet, there's, a, there's an appendix with a whole bunch of worksheets and charts, and I'm going to go through them now. And that's not that one, this one here. I'm going to go through them now just to show you the sorts of worksheets that you can use to get familiar with the process. How do you identify? How do you quantify? How do you record uh, what's in a mare? And you should do this with every one of your mares. You should have a file for each mare in which you've gone through the evaluation process and record what you see there so that you get an understanding of what you're working with so that you don't have to always go back and check to see what it is. It's right there in front of your face. That you can, knowing what the lines are in your, in your pedigree, you can create a, a sentence that, that describes uh, what the mayor looks like. Now let's just do that. This is Anoka Hanover. I'm kind of shorten this up a bit here. Take it over here. This 
Now, now this is a trotter. So we'll go down to the trotting broodmare evaluation. It's the basic worksheet. And what are we trying to do here? Well, put in the name, whatever it is, Anoka Hanover, put in her sire name, Donato Hanover. What's her sire line? Well, Donato Hanover, if you look up here, you can get me out of the way here, I'll put this down here. The Nano Hanover is the Nova Victory line is designated V. Here's Nova Victory. So Nova Victory line. Actually, Victory Song is the sire of Nova Victory, so it's there, Victory Song. And that's the green line here. So the sire line is Victory Song. So what are the principal sire lines of this mare? Now the dam sire sire. What's the dam sire sire? What does that mean? That's this dam. This is her as a dam. Her sire sire is Andover Hall. Put that in there. The dam sire dam sire. Dam sire dam sire is Donna Rail. Put it in here. The second dam sire is Yankee Glide. Put it in here. The third dam sire is Striking Sabra. Put it in here. Now, what sire line are they? And over Hall, we already know, is the Volumite or Victory Song line. So, just click an X right there. Um, Donna Rail, who goes in here, I could type these in, but it just distort the whole thing because it's not, man, I, it might be. Probably just shift everything over. Yeah, it does. I can click it back here. So Donna Rail, what is Donna Rail? Go to Donna Rail, S, Speedster. Um, the second dam, Yankee Glide, Speedster Line. We'll put Yankee Glide in here too. You probably just write these in rather than type them. Now, what you do is you print these worksheets off and just write them in put your X's and whatever. And the, the, the third dam is by striking Sabra, star sprite line, it's a W. And this is star sprite line here, W. So now the W here, we're gonna put X in here. So we've got all what you have here. And how would I describe this? I would say uh, noble, oh, victory line, inbred to speedster line, with stars, pride, line, maternally. It's just a short description of what's in the mirror. And just as, and just as a notation, see here, this is, see, here's noble victory line or victory song line Inbred to speedster, the internal lines here are both speedster line. That means 
She's in bred to speedster. And there's a star spline line maternally. Okay. Ovovictory line in bred to speedster with star spline line maternally. That's what this mare is. Now, just to kind of make it easier for you, I mean, we're doing stuff here. We're detecting patterns and we're using letters and we're going to use colors. Just like you're back in grade one here now. This is what you do in back in grade one to get your mind associated with certain concepts. So you'd say, okay, what does that mean? Okay, if I was looking at a profile of a Donato Hanover mare, and I, I lined up the profile, and they're all color coded, as you, if, as you recall. The color coding on this particular mare would be green, red, red, blue. That's just to make it easier. And in fact, you could make it even easier if you wanted to type this in and then just go up here and pick your color and put it on there. Put your blue in the green, red, red, blue. But what this does, for instance, we went over to uh, not out of Hanover here. And we did a SAR profile of Don Donato Hanover. Oh, wait, now, no, that's not what I want to do. Though. We're looking at her as a we're looking at her as a broodmare. So I want a broodmare sire profile. Let's look at the top 20 broodmares by Donato Harbour. Here's Donato's maternal line, green red. Now, are there any? mares in here whose next two dams, the dam dam sire and the dam 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 sire, the second and third dam are red blue. Well, here's one right at the very top. One's blue chip, red blue. Here's a red blue here, another red blue here. So it's a pattern that shows up in the top ones. There are other patterns you could, you know, there's an acceptable one that's red green. That would be like green, red, red, green. Uh, and there's a blue, red, blue, red, which is kind of flip side of red, blue. So that's the same sort of thing stuff. So what you're looking for is some kind of assurance that the profile of the mirror that you're looking at bear some resemblance with reality in terms of being able to produce something special. So what are the options here for this mare? In terms of how she should be bred. Too many windows open here. Okay, we're gonna go here. Move this over a little. So now we, uh, we wanna look at matching scenarios. What is a matching scenario? Um, basically, these are the old pedigree matching ways of looking at things. We wanna have one scenario, one possible pattern is to have one or more of the lines here. 
uh, to match and to, the, to a stallion of interest. Now, normally in that approach, you would take the two principal lines, which are the Nova Victor line and the Valley Victor line. So we'd say, okay, I'm looking for sires that have Nova Victory. But lastly, we'll, we'll narrow it up. We really want to get something that's closer. We're interested in sires that have Garland, Lavelle, and Valley Victory. Because that brings it, when you do a, uh, um, a joint pedigree with whatever sire you're going to look at, that brings them into the fourth generation. You could even use Yankee Glide and Andover Hall as possibilities. These are the key sires that you're going to look for in the maternal side of the sires that you're going to breed, you're hopeful to breed to. So let's just put in um, Kyle and Lobel and Valley Victory. Again, it looks untidy because I'm just typing it anywhere in here, but uh, you could um, tidy it up easy enough. Okay, so that's one possibility. What's another possibility? Any two sire lines matched to the dam of the stallion's sire. This is the stallion's sire. So here's the stallion's sire, his Andover Hall. So what's his dam? It's Magnaforce and Texas. A little bit of a navigation problem here. I hope we're not going to lose this. Uh oh. I I, I can see. Okay, I've got a problem here on Zoom with the crash. 